Hey everybody, welcome to the Art of Relationship Show. I'm your host, as always, Greg Dzinski, licensed professional counselor, relationship and sex specialist, Detroit's love guru, and I have a very special guest uh, with us, Dr. Judson Brandeis, who is a urologist specialized in Northern California, who also wrote a book, The 21st Century Man. And I'm going to bring him on, and we're going to talk about men's health, sexuality, relationships, and also get into women's um, aspects and sexual challenges as well. So it's going to be an interesting show. Join the live chat. You can also call in. I forgot I should have the number memorized, right? It's 844-814-LOVE, which is 5683. So go ahead. You can call in. You'll be anonymous which is I'll, I want your privacy to be respected. So you can also join the chat down below and we're gonna kick things off right after this. Don't go anywhere. Okay, welcome, Dr. Judson Bandeis. Right now, say hello, uh, Dr. Judson. Oh, hey. Greg, thanks so much for having me here. It's really oh, great to I'm, be here. I'm looking forward to this. This is so crucial. We did a little, uh, you know, little intro before I went live. So this is so crucial. I appreciate you uh, being on. Introduce yourself. Where your area of research and let's face it, your practices in the medical community regarding men's health and even with, you know, menopause and women and trying to get a general sense. And I'm more from going from general to specific and helping people out there with these challenges. So hit me up with your special area and let our viewers out there know as well. Yeah. So I started my career as a, a board certified general urologist. I focused on prostate cancer, kidney stones, incontinence. I, I built our robotics uh, center boy, in 2002, so really, really early on. Uh, I built our kidney stone center, our MRI-guided MRI prostate biopsy uh, program. But about three years ago, I became really interested in regenerative urology. So how we can help men who have difficulty getting erections, difficulty with physical intimacy, and get them back in the sack, right? So men where the little blue pill is not working so well anymore. And so I helped uh, pioneer shockwave therapy and platelet-rich plasma and a number of techniques that are regenerative, that help grow new blood vessels. And as I saw man after man after man who came to my office with sexual dysfunction, I also began to learn a lot more about the big picture how men want to feel good, how men want to look good, and then also how men want physical intimacy. And I developed this really comprehensive holistic approach to men with uh, sexual dysfunction. And that really resulted when COVID hit. I, I, I'm one of those people I always need to be doing something. I can't just sit still. And so I had to shut my office down for about two, three months, and I decided to write oh. a book. And then it's like one of those little snowballs that just kind of get bigger and bigger yeah. and bigger. And by the by two years, I had 101 chapters and over 900 pages, and by far and away, the most comprehensive and medically accurate book ever written on men's health. And I have 60 physicians and men's health experts that help write chapters on stuff that I don't know that much about. So Phenomenal. Well, and you tell of your book, as people can see, it's in the background, uh, right behind uh, Dr. Judson as well, the name of your book. The 21st Century Man. Awesome. And where can people find this? So if you go to the 21stcenturyman.com, just all written out as letters without numbers, that's our website. And that's the best place to get the, the book, the ebook, and pretty soon the audiobook. Very cool. I know the audiobook I've been getting uh, on my books. I get people, Greg, when are you going to do the audio verse? I said, you don't want to listen to my voice as it is right now. <laughs> yeah. so, and it, it, the audio version, if as you will find out, is a totally different animal as far as, you know, the uh, requirements, the formatting and everything. It, it's a different animal. So. Yeah. Well, you know, in the Bay Area, we have some of the worst commutes in the country. So uh, yes. 
A lot of so people you stuck in traffic. Of time, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not me, but what, a lot what of people. Are you, yeah. Awesome. What are you finding out with uh, I, with men? And I, you know, I run into this on a daily basis, if not, or pretty close to it. As far as you know, how it hits men if they can't get an erection, right? If if my dick don't work, I'm not a man. And you know, you hit the physical, but you also run into the emotional element as well. Let's be honest. Absolutely. I mean, it's really central to um, the way a man feels about himself, his sexual function. Even if, even if you're not uh, partnered with someone, just waking up in the morning with an erection, or just knowing that you can get an erection if you need to, is part of a man's sort of self confidence, their identity their sense of self. And when you lose that, you really lose a part of yourself. I mean, some of the saddest patients that I see are younger men who've undergone prostate cancer surgery and oh. can no longer get an erection. And it's just, it's really, I talk about it a little bit in, in, in the prostate cancer and the sexual health chapters of the books, um, you know, how devastating that can be for men. No. And I, I appreciate that. And it, it's very difficult. A lot of people don't they sort of, I don't know if they underestimate, they don't think about medical professional, you know, you're working on the pragmatics, the medical, you know, the black and white situation, what you can do. But I mean, you run into men, I'm sure that are in tears that are, you know, their manhood got taken away and they're, let's face it, they're almost begging you to make it better. And it, yeah. it's very difficult. And I don't want, I don't want the listeners, you know, and the viewers to, you know, go away with that. Cause I know a lot of medical professionals, oh, they don't care. It's all medical procedure, but there's a lot of emotions dealing with that too. What have you, have you had a lot of experience with combat vets as far as, you know, they, you know, a bomb goes off, you know, um, IED goes off. And the first thing they're worried about, they're not worried about their legs. They're worried about if their junk is still there, you know? So it's very difficult. And what do you tell those, um, maybe the first protocol with people, men that have erection challenges or their penis don't work? What do you tell them? Yeah, well, I mean, the penis doesn't work for a variety of reasons. I, you know, I had a patient the other day who was a motorcycle police officer that was T-boned by a uh, in a chase and, and we had uh, to do some work with him. And I have some veterans, not a huge number, uh, but for most men, it's a, a vasculogenic cause. So what that means is that the blood vessels going to the penis get clogged. So when the heart pumps, the two last places that get blood in the body are the toes and the penis, right? But you don't get toe erections. As the blood flow declines to the toe, you know, you get cold feet, so you put socks on, no big deal. But the penis requires a certain amount of blood flow in order to function because what happens is as the pressure increases to the penis, it swells. And as it swells, it blocks the backflow of blood. So there's a threshold level that you have to achieve. It's kind of like being on the top of a burning building, right? If you jump six feet, you're safe. If you jump five feet, it's a long way down. So in the penis, right. if you achieve, say, 100 mil millimeters of mercury of blood pressure, you have a really good night. But if you achieve 95 millimeters of blood pressure, it's going to be a frustrating night. And so that's really what my focus is with my patients is how can we improve blood flow to the penis in order to get a rigid erection? Now, I also tell my patients erections are half physiologic and half psychological. And so we work on both the physiology, but then also the psychology. But the psychology is not really like, you know, you're crazy, you can't get an erection. We discuss what the underlying neurochemistry is, what, what actually anxiety and stress means at a, a cellular and a hormonal level. And a lot of times when men understand that, they're able to make adjustments so that the psychological aspects of it aren't as um, damaging. It, it, it's very difficult when you um, run into, you know, a lot of guys with erectile problems, you know, diabetes, high blood pressure, certain medications, um, heart challenges. I've run into 
uh, young men as young as, uh, say, 23, and I've argued with doctors, do blood work, test, you know, testosterone aspects, which is rare. And, you know, I'm arguing no disrespect, you know, <laughs> please test, you know, with doctors. Why? They're 23. Why do you have to test it? I've run into it. It's rare, but I run into it where like testosterone levels are non-existent. So it's, um, you know, you look at that aspect and what it does psychologically, psychologically. Now, if their penis worked, there'd be no issues, right? And I'm glad you brought up about stress, about anxiety, because if it don't work one time, it's psychosomatic and, oh, you're worried about it, but it's not gonna work, it's not gonna work, and then it doesn't work. It's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. When it happens, what is your first, I guess, procedure as far as checking medical aspects about what's going on to help men? So I, you know, I have a chapter in the book that that really documents, in a really nice fashion, my holistic approach to men with erectile dysfunction. You know, I, I used to be an insurance based physician, and I don't take insurance anymore. Uh, and so I have the luxury of spending, you know, each one of my new patients I spend at least an hour with, and we go over God, everything. Awesome. You know, from I start with, you know, where were you born? Where did you go to school? What do you do for a living? You know. Are you married? Are you divorced? Uh, we talk about kids. We talk about, you know, uh, the, the most difficult question that I ask men, uh, because I have really, really good patients, really good quality men. And the one question that brings almost everyone to their knees is, what do you do for fun? And they just, they, they just kind of look at me with this blank stare. Uh, and, and 20, 30 years ago, it would have been a half an hour. They would have been like, well, you know, I got uh, cars and I got like you know, movies and I snowboard and I ski and I, you know, and now they just stand, you know, they just sit there and they're like, well, you know, uh, I do some kid stuff and I do stuff with the wife. And, um, and, and so I really help men understand their life process and kind of refocus them on their goals. And I have a, uh, it's called an in-body body composition scale. So it looks at how much uh, percent body fat people have and what their muscular development is and what their basal metabolic rate. And, and so we talk about weight loss. We talk about muscle building. We talk about stretching. We talk about supplements. We talk about eating um, because all those things affect erectile function. You know, I have patients who I'll send out for a calcium score because I think that they're, they have heart disease. We talk about addictions yeah. and all these things are in the book. There's a whole section on addiction. There's great chapters on heart disease. There's great chapter, a whole section on food. There's a whole section on exercise. Uh, and then once I get to know the patient and I know their medical issues, then we start to talk about sexual function. And so you know, then I understand the physiology. I talk about medications. You know, there's so many medications that can affect erectile function. Absolutely. No, I love that. And I love your holistic approach because it it's very important to look at those aspects. And to be honest with you, I don't think I've ever talked to a urologist, um, you know, a medical professional that, I'll just say a urologist that have gone into the psychological, the social aspects of men, what they do, how they affect it. And a lot of people, you know, they ignore that and they go right to the medical and they don't look at, you know, it could be, let's face it, alcohol consumption, drug consumption, all those aspects that could be affecting, if you want to say the vascular aspects of it, or we talked about, you know, the anxiety, the depression aspects too, self-worth, self-concept. And it's interesting, you brought up, you know, about what do you do for fun. And so many men now, if it's even, you know, pre COVID, all I do is work. You know, I work, I go home. Well, what do you do for fun? And it, a lot of, you're right. A lot of men, their whole identity, maybe mine as well. Not my whole identity. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, I, I, I'm, you got to practice what you preach. <laughs> absolutely. And people know, you know, people following the show and stuff. No, I'm a smart ass. I love joking around and stuff. And uh, um, I can call myself out on it. I'm, I'm cocky, but I'm a little, I'm humble enough to own my stuff. So, you know, you look at it, what are we doing for fun? And just laughter and oxygen and 
the blood flow, that laughter and enjoyment, as you know, I don't want to step on your toes. And, you know, it, it's, are you going to be, what do you get excited about? What are you passionate about in life? You know, besides maybe you love your job, maybe you don't, maybe it's a necessity. So you have to look at, you know, what do you do? What are you passionate about? Now, would you be, if you had, if your penis didn't work, would you be passionate about it or wouldn't, doesn't it really matter to you? So what do you run into the main, you know, the main aspect, does it attack a man's manhood, if you will, or self-worth, or do they really don't care if it does work or not? And they're more or less seeking your help because their wife, their girlfriend, they're doing it because they're pushed into it, if you will. Uh, you know, I, I think it bothers men and I think that they want to come in, but a lot of times they need a push from their partner or their spouse to, uh, to kind of leap across the bridge. And you know, that's the, that's the problem. I mean, the men's health in this country is a catastrophe. A hundred years ago, women lived one year longer than men. Now women live five years longer than men. That's a big difference. A huge difference. Yeah. And, and Longevity for men is actually even pre-COVID is declining. And you know why it's declining? Alcohol, no, alcohol, opioids, and suicide. The lifespan of Caucasian yes. middle-aged men is actually declining. And I'm glad you brought and it's sad. Um, oh, it's wow. really sad. Oh, it, and suicide rates is I got chills, you know, thinking about it. Um, suicide rates are they're huge. They're almost double. I think they are double now uh, for men than they are for women. Oh, and I think it, it's it, it I think it's actually three times higher you, for men. You might for be women. right. And women are more likely to commit suicide, but men are more likely to to finish the job, unfortunately. Correct. Attempt and, versus uh, and then, you know, on top of it, we talk I have a chapter on stupid things men do to get themselves in the emergency room. And men are in much more dangerous occupations, mm -hmm. commercial fishing, roofing, uh, those kind of things. And so, and men are half as likely as women to go to the doctor. So Jeez. there's this, there's this ethos of like, we are tough. We can take care of ourselves. And that's what the genesis of this book really is, right? This book is over 900 pages. And I've gone to all like the top institutions in this country. I've been in medical practice for 20 years. I've done some really amazing stuff. This book is everything that I know, everything that I've learned over the past 25 years. And I roped in 60 of my colleagues, really, really top people in the country to write about their fields, whether it's podiatry or hand surgery or sleep or allergy or awesome. depression, anxiety, work-life balance vitality, hair replacement, hair removal, cosmetic dermatology. Uh, there's an, an unbelievable chapter written on health insurance, right? The health insurance system in this country is horrible. It sucks. Let's it's, be honest. It's bewildering. Okay. This chapter, after you read this chapter, it'll become much more clear. Because in order to be healthy in this country, you have to know how to go to the doctor. You have to know how to use your health insurance card. And you know what else? There was a study done by Cerner. Cerner is a huge electronic medical record company. They looked at yes. 100 million charts. Yes. Guess how much the average time someone spent with the doctor was? I want to say probably three minutes. Yeah. Well, it feels like three minutes, but 16 minutes and 14 seconds in the really? row. It's, it's that much. I'm surprised. I actually surprised. With yeah. It. So, but whether it's three minutes or 16 minutes, this book has a chapter that teaches you how to make the most of that time, right? From the inside, I wrote the chapter, right? I understand when you walk into the doctor's office and you get to see the doctor, the clock is ticking. And the problem is the doctor has to chart everything, right? Because they can't charge unless you chart. That's the way things work. And so, you know, if you want to make the most of that time and you should see your relationship with your doctor as a partnership. It's not like, you know, Moses on, on the top of the mountain handing down edicts, but it's you and the doctor working together for you to be more healthy. So you got to go in there with a 
you know, your medical history, a list of your medications, a list of your imaging studies, and then a description of, you know, why you're there. You know, I started having back pain uh, three weeks ago and it's 10 out of 10, but now it's five out of 10 and it's on the right more than the left and it goes down my leg and I've been taking naproxen, you know, like all these things, all these little details, you could spend 10 minutes with a doctor writing that stuff down, or you could just give it to him or her and then make a list that. of questions. I love that attitude. You know, this is what's going on. Uh, you know, I love that. Why waste time? Be more direct. Waste, I mean, you your got six, at the most, you got 16 minutes and 14 seconds. The clock is ticking when that doctor walks in. And if you're sitting there chit-chatting about your cat and the University of Michigan game, you're wasting valuable time. I mean, my attorney is 750 bucks an hour, right? So I know it's more than $10 a minute. You know, yeah. that's like a like a good sandwich every minute, <laughs> right? You're right. You know, yeah. so, you know right. that's, that's like how, that's like lunch for a month or two. I'm glad I don't have your attorney. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I, I got a discounted rate through yeah. mine. So, but no, I'm glad. Now that's a good point in the health system. Let's face it, it it's terrible in this country. It, it's you know people that have the money, they have better health care. We we know this. So you know you have somebody that might have Medicare, you know Medicaid, and they try to seek help. And I know you don't take insurance, and I, I've been I've been doing this over what over two decades. You know, and I still accept some insurances and I want to get away from it. And then you feel guilty helping people and all that aspect. So what do you what do you do as far as, you know, men that have say it's vascular aspects are they're OK. Um, then what happens? Which where do you go from that point on with the rect rectile challenges if there's no, you know, tissue tissue damage? You know, there's no, um, you know, cartilage damage aspects. Where do you go from that point on? Well, I mean, 90% of erectile dysfunction is vascular. So if you live in America and you eat an American diet, then you probably have some sort of vascular disease. But so let me, let me start from the beginning. So when you're young, 15, 20, 25, 30, everything works great. You wake up in the morning, every morning with an erection, Right. At some point that changes, whether it's 40 or 45 or 50. Um, and when that changes, that's actually a significant event. What that's telling you is your blood vessels are beginning to get clogged, right? Those morning erections aren't occurring as frequently and morning nighttime erections, right? When you're asleep every night, you should be getting 30 to 60 minutes of erections every night. And what that does is it stretches the penis and brings in oxygenated blood flow, right? And so think about it this way. Like, have you ever seen that TV show Naked and Afraid? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Do you ever see anyone having sex on Naked and Afraid? No. Right? How come? Right? There are two naked people in the middle of the jungle with no one around. And let's face it, they never put ugly people on those shows either. Exactly. So we, we know. <laughs> right. Because, you know, aside from humans, almost every other animal spends most of their time trying to survive, trying to build shelter, trying oh. to eat. And so it's relatively infrequent when the hormonal signals are up saying that there's a fertility event and animals procreate. So the rest of the time you're not getting an erection. So how do you keep the penis healthy? Well, you keep the penis healthy through nighttime erections. Nice. But when awesome. you're losing nighttime erections, that's telling you that those little blood vessels, because the blood vessels going to the penis are one or two millimeters in size. Those little blood vessels are starting to get clogged to wow. the point where you're not getting nighttime erections. Now, what happens 10 years after that? 10 years after that, all of a sudden you're in bed with your, your partner and things aren't working. No. Right. Okay. So then those one or two millimeter blood vessels have gotten clogged to the point where you're not able to maintain that threshold blood pressure that blocks the exit of venous blood. Okay. So let me take it 10 years later, 10 years later, you're going to have some sort of cardiovascular event. 
because now the three to four millimeter blood vessels that are called coronary arteries are going to begin to get clogged. So you have to understand these are early warning signals. The loss of nighttime erections is the first event. And so I actually have a supplement called Affirm from affirmscience.com. And it's a nitric oxide booster. Yes. And nitric oxide was something that was discovered when I was at UCLA. One of my professors won the Nobel Prize. And they also discovered how Viagra works. And it works through the nitric oxide system. And as you get older, you lose nitric oxide or you lose nitric oxide production. And by eating basically the extract of watermelon and beets, because there's two different pathways to get oh, nitric awesome. oxide. That I did you not can, know. Nice. Yeah, yeah, you can boost circulation. That's why every article on what can you eat to improve erectile function always has watermelon, which has citrulline, and nice. beets, which has nitrates. And nice. Affirm has both citrulline and uh, nitrates. Now, beyond that, we put a lot of our patients on what, what are called PDE5 inhibitors. So nitric oxide <laughs> creates this molecule called CGMP. And there's no, not a quiz on what all these things are, but CGMP is like the thank, linchpin. Thank God, no. Yeah, the <laughs> CGMP is the linchpin of the whole system. So the more CGMP you have, the more your blood vessels open up. And nice. Now there's a specific enzyme. The, the way that Viagra and Cialis and Levitra work is there's a specific enzyme that's only in the penis called PDE5. Yes. And those medications are PDE5 inhibitors. So they block the wow. enzyme. So you maintain higher levels of CGMP and blood vessels stay open. But you need the nitric oxide to make the CGMP and then you need the PDE5 inhibitors to keep the CGMP. And that's the signal. Now, the other part of it is the pipe. So think about it like you got a pump in the backyard, right? For like, I have a rainwater tank in my backyard because we don't get nearly as much rain I, as you guys do. Nice, right? California is nice always choice. in droughts. Oh, yeah. nice choice of words, yeah. right? When you're talking about pump, right? No. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and so... You know, there's the electricity to the pump. That's the signal. And so that's what's nitric oxide. And that you can improve that with PDE5 inhibitor. But the other part of it is the pipes, the tubes, the arteries that pump blood or, or water, whatever you want to say, um, for an erection. And so how can you improve those pipes? Okay, so diet, exercise, uh, maybe a statin, those kind of things are, are all things to prevent you from getting in trouble. But once you get into trouble, once you have those problems, what can you do? So there's something called low intensity shockwave therapy or gains wave there. It goes by a number of names, but what it is, is you are tricking your body into thinking that there's an injury. These acoustic waves come and they vibrate the blood vessels. And when they vibrate the blood vessels, you activate stem cells. So you have stem cells all throughout your body. That's how you regenerate tissue. And right. when you stimulate those stem cells in blood vessels, those stem cells start to grow into new blood vessels. And also you cause the release of growth factors and that causes the growth of new blood vessels. Does that mean uh, guys can uh, hook up jumper cables to their penis and they'll get a bigger penis? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> actually, so I actually have a clinical research study on penile oh, enhancement. Nice. Yeah. So, you know, and uh, to be perfectly honest, I could care less how long guys' penises are. Thank you. Um, but Thank I, you. as a sexual medicine expert, yes, I see men who have done things uh, to improve the, the size of their penis, whether it's fat injections or... Uh, injections of fillers like hyaluronic acid yes. or procedures like the E-list procedure where they get a silicone implant placed in the penis or yes. suspensory ligament ligation. And I, I've, I, maybe it's because I'm a, I'm a sexual medicine expert, but I see yes. the, the, the patients that have problems from those uh, procedures. And, and I'm not a, I know a lot of about, you know, the body medicine when it comes to effects of, you know, 
the Volvo with females, penis, and all this aspect. I, I never recommend men going through that length. Uh, you're, you're, I mean, you're the expert when it comes to medical aspects. Well, so what I created was a clinical research study that's listed by clinicaltrials.gov. It's got IRB approval, and we use what's called platelet-rich plasma. So the platelets in our body, yes. not only do they stop bleeding, but they also have a tremendous amount of growth factor. And so if you concentrate platelets and through a tiny needle inject it into the penis and then use traction devices, suction devices, and the Affirm nitric oxide boosting supplement, we actually have uh, some really amazing results on growing both girth and length and improving function of the penis. And there's no, let's face it, there's no or very limited side effects. To there's, it. you know, that's the beautiful thing is there's yeah. no downside. You know, I've seen awful complications from all these other procedures. And what I wanted to do was to create something safe. Like if you look at studies where they ask men, do you want a bigger penis? 55% of men will say, yes, I would like a bigger penis, right? A much smaller percentage of men act on it. But think about it this way. Over 300,000 women every year get breast implants. Yes. You know, do they need larger breasts? No. But do they want larger breasts? Yes. So, you know, I, I, I don't, shame. yeah, I don't judge or, or shame or criticize no, anyone for doing that. My purpose no. of the P long study, which if anyone is in the Bay area and they're interested in the P long study, just go to my website, which is Brandeis, B R A N D E I S M D.com. Go to my research tab. It lists all my research studies and just go to the P long study. We're going to continue recruiting for another month and a half. And then um, I'm going to, the, there's a big meeting of the International Society of Sexual Medicine in Miami in October, and we're going to present the data there. Oh my but God, it's, that would uh, be phenomenal. Yeah, it's it's going to be amazing because yeah. my results have been, um, you know, we're not doubling the size of a guy's penis, but we're, you know, we're significantly improving the size of the penis, both girth and length and improving function and it's 100% safe and it's actually much much less expensive than fillers or surgeries um so it's it's really cool you know i mean i'm i, I uh, i'm not it. you know uh, i'm not curing cancer but i've done some good stuff no and i i love it and that that is terrific it's that one you know that one aspect about you know okay will the size help sexual pleasure of the woman right let's face it if guys were worried about the size of their penis is it more about their own ego or is it more about pleasuring the women and we can you know we could get into you know most of the women's uh pleasure senses are in the first third part of the vaginal canal uh clitoral aspect of clitoral nerve network so it's looking at you know there's some women I had to talk with Greg and there's nothing that's too big <laughs> and there's, uh, you know, women that, are well, you know, if they've had it, you know, maybe or, or 10 inch, 10 pound kids, may, maybe there is nothing that's too right. big. Eggs, oh, no kidding. <laughs> but, really? but, um, you know, really? uh, most right. men that, that have penile lengthening or augmentation procedures have penises that are within normal size. Yes. So it's it's more about sort of body dysmorphia or absolute. You know, and, and we try to, you know, we try to address the psychological aspects of anyone that comes into the study to make sure they're coming into it for the right reasons. But you know, I mean uh, uh, my my, my patients have and the, the people that have been in the study have been very, very reasonable and and really good uh participants. That is awesome. Yeah. And I know you have to go pretty quick. I want to um want to add number one, do you agree or do you the British Medical Journal, right? The average erect penis size they said is 5.25 inches. Uh do you agree with that? Number one, and real quick, I want to the importance, and people laugh when I bring this up, but I ask men, do you do Kegel exercise. What? That's for women. What is, what is, and I went, wait a minute, you know, what do you find that's very beneficial in men practicing Kegel exercises as well? 
Yeah. So um, I published a study fairly recently or presented it at the Sexual Medicine Society meeting on the first technology to improve the intensity and duration of orgasm. So it's called uh, high intensity focused electromagnetic waves. It uses a two Tesla magnet to create electromagnetic fields. So instead of a, a Kegel exercise, it uses electromagnetic field to actually contract the muscle and it contracts it to a much greater extent than you could ever do it on your own. Because, oh you know, people all talk about doing Kegel exercises, but almost nobody does it. It's not, it's, it's a really difficult muscle to contract. There's a, there's a, a site called uh, privategym.com or theprivategym.com. I think it's privategym.com that has a, a Kegel exercise program that you can use to build up the pelvic floor. Um, but I also have this machine called the Amcella machine. We developed protocol two specifically for men and we tested it and it improved the intensity and duration of orgasm. And it's really amazing. You know, like that's another one you're like, oh, well, you know, sort of big deal. But I, you know, I had a patient the other day, 65 year old attorney hadn't had an orgasm in five or six years. And, you know, he came into the office and just hugged me and said, oh. you know, I had two orgasms last weekend, you know, with my girlfriend and, and it was the first time in five or six years. Oh and, you know, that goodness. was really cool. I mean, you know, it's very cool. And it's, uh, you know, you look at women, let's face it, you know, they don't have an orgasm. They tell their man, well, oh, it's no big deal, whatever. But if a man doesn't have an orgasm, women get very upset, their self-esteem, oh, I'm not hot enough, I'm not doing it for you. And it could be a bunch of, you know, just like, uh, let's face it, um, early ejaculation, the opposite can happen when it comes to, you know, performance anxiety, where, you know, men, oh, I got to come, I got to come, and you don't come. And then their women, ladies or partners, we'll just say their partners get upset. You know, if you're talking about same sex uh, aspects, they get upset, they get, you know, irate, and it comes from hurt because of self esteem. So I, ha I see it from both perspectives. It's not easy. Yeah. I mean, there, there's so much sort of psychological baggage that we all bring into relationships yes. and, and assumptions and lack of knowledge. Um, you know, the 21st century man has really an incredible sexual health section you know there i wrote the first four chapters first one is called sex on the beach that talks about what happened when things go well the second one is called um, uh, sexual dysfunction so it's kind of what happens when things don't go well the third is orgasm that explains what an orgasm is premature and delayed orgasm then the fourth is the um my overall approach to erectile function, but there's also chapters on shockwave therapy, on vacuum erection devices, on PRP written by Charles Runnels, who invented the P-Shot, uh, one on stem cells, one on peptides and alternative things you never even heard of, like PT-141 and oxytocin and apomorphine. There are chapters on um, penile implants, on trimix, uh, sex toys, uh, lubes, condoms uh how to make love to a woman i mean it's like it's packed that on testosterone written by gary donovitz the ceo of biot and a you know a, a board certified gynecologist um just uh, it, it it's just this book really like it's honestly it's by far and away the most comprehensive book ever written on men's health and it's written by really top experts and I wrote, I either wrote or edited every single word of every single chapter in this book. And I can promise you, there's not one word that's extraneous. Like there's, I can't stand reading a 300 page book. And then you're like, this could have been five pages. Correct. This is 900 pages. And the least number of pages it could have been written in is 900. I promise you. I, I can't wait. and uh, I can't wait to read it. And again, before we say goodbye to you, where can people find the book again? Where can they learn more information about you and reach out to you if they need your expertise? 
Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm very easily Googleable. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the advantage of having a name like Judson Brandeis. Um, but uh, if you go to BrandeisMD.com, B-R-A-N-D-E-I-S-M-D.com, I do uh, some Skype consultations. I, I get people sort of all over the place um, uh, asking, uh, you know, if I do second opinions and I'm an expert in prostate cancer and erectile dysfunction and, uh, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then to buy the book, you can go to the 21st century man, all written out in letters.com. And uh, we have the ebook, we have the hardcover book, and it will never be in paperback, right? A men's health book needs to be a, 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 a solid hardcover, like, you, like, you nice analogy, grab, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh, and we're almost done with the audio book. Um, and uh, so I have professional voice talent, so it's not just me. You don't have to hear me. But I have uh, Joe Starkey wrote oh, a chapter yes. on on uh, how sports bring us together and so joe has such a famous voice he he called the the u.s olympic um hockey radio and yes. he did the play the cal stanford play and he's got such a recognizable amazing voice i had him do it and then brian Bandmiller miller wrote a chapter on uh, inspiration he's a national news guy. He's interviewed every president and every big business leader yeah. uh you know we there's even like the the end of the book Right. The, the book is based. There are a couple of themes that go through the book. One is uh, looking good, feeling good and having better physical intimacy and relationships. Uh, the second is the hero's journey. And the hero's journey is kind of baked into the whole book. Right. Because we all know what to do. Right. Don't drink. Don't smoke. Don't do drugs. Don't right. eat too much. Exercise every day. Like we all know that. But at the end of the day, most of us don't do all those things. Real life hits, right? Yeah, real life hits. And so if you see yourself as the hero of your own journey, right? If you don't see Tiger Woods as the as a hero, because, you know, he's got his own issues or, um, you know, whoever, Bill Clinton, you know, he's got his, you know, they all, they all, everyone, every man's got their own issues. Everybody no one's life is, issues. no one's life is perfect, right? But if you see yourself as the hero of your own journey, then you're much more likely to make decisions that will have a positive impact on your own journey. And so the end of the book, there's a chapter on gratitude. There's a chapter on inspiration. Crucial. There's a chapter on legacy. And then uh, the final chapter is about my own personal hero's journey. I would and love, I can't wait to read it. And I definitely appreciate you being on the show. And uh, I'll promote your information, your work, your, you know, professional research uh, as much as I can to help out. And it's not only helping you, it's helping out, let's face it, all the men out there. Not only that, it'll help. It's for women, too, because women with this knowledge, you can help your man and look at, you know, get rid of stereotypes, get rid of myths. And it can help you enhance your relationship. Yeah, as Absolutely. Also. I, I think great. that women are going to probably buy half the books because there's yes. an amazing chapter on what men need to know about menopause. Yes. And there's another chapter on what women can do to help their spouses. So, you know, we, it, the book is for men, but it's, it, we really have women in mind as part of a team, right? Right. You know, you, you, you men get in trouble when they, we think we can do it alone. But, you know, if you, if you, include your spouse if you include your doctor if you work with them you know there's no shame in you know admitting that not really admitting that you need help but just allowing people to help you i'll use the word admitting you need help and i tell people it's not um and i i promote this i promote you know this information. I promote men about feeling their emotions, about expressing it. I, I promote all this stuff and I tell people, you know, admitting you're hurt, you feel embarrassed, you feel it doesn't make you weak. It makes you more human. It makes you more of a man. It takes a lot of guts and a lot of courage to admit, hey, we need help. And it's part of being human instead of, you know, it, it's not about being it's there's a difference. You can still admit you need help and still be strong and still be a man and trying to break that myth that's been around since 
what beginning of time yeah but you know this book is just an incredible source of information for a man who needs something like that to break the ice so there's there's chapters on depression and anxiety written by uh, Brett McLaughlin, who's the Dean of psychology for Cal North state. There's chapters on uh, vitality and work-life balance written by uh, uh, Robert Bonfiglio, who's president of the California psychological association. There's chapters on fatherhood. There's chapters on divorce written by Jonathan LaRose, who's a, a divorce attorney. You know, there's Brett Beaver wrote three amazing therapy chapters um, there's a chapter on mindfulness. I mean, it's, it's really like mental health and relationships is such an important part of physical health that there was the Harvard longevity study that showed that the quality of a man's relationships was the most important predictive factor for his health. Yes. Absolutely. Not like if you take an aspirin or, or a statin, you know, none of that really mattered if your relationships were toxic. Nope. And the people that have uh, the healthiest, happiest relationships live longer too, as you exactly. know, right? So exactly. it's looking at, I used to joke around that, uh, you know, men, we didn't live, you know, on average, and we talked about this before live, that men on average, you know, you mentioned five years, I've heard, you know, years ago, five to seven years, that men, you know, we die five to seven years before women on average. I said, because you know what, uh, the universe, God, whatever you believe in, you know, does us a favor and puts us out of our misery. <laughs> I, I joke, right? I, I don't want to piss any people know I love joking around, but you know, looking at those, uh, it put us out, does us a favor, right? No one wants to be in a miserable relationship. And this, uh, you know, if you're in a miserable relationship, most men, it's emotional too. So they're not going to be turned on. They're not going to be, and that could be, you look at, oh, men don't get desired. We're supposed to have an erection when the wind blows, right? And the emotional element of erections and stuff and men being desired or, you know, desiring their partner, it's emotional as well. And that is so crucial. And I'm glad you cover it in your book. It's, I promote that. I have forever that people really don't realize that women don't realize yeah, that. you and I are on the same page. Yeah, absolutely. Same page. It's crucial. You know, you know it. And I definitely uh, appreciate you uh, showing up. I definitely appreciate your expertise. And uh, one more time, you can find Dr. Brandeis book, the 21st century man. And you said, spell it out, right? Spell it out. All letters, 21stcenturyman.com. Don't go to Amazon. Jeff Bezos doesn't need another rocket. Are you kidding me? No. It's shaped <laughs> like a penis, too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> if there was anything phallic, I mean, oh, my gosh. Good point. Thank you so much. And hey, uh, we'll, I'll touch base. I'll reach you out to it. you shortly, okay? All right. Thanks. Take you care. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. Um it's uh greg coming back to you i appreciate dr uh van dice being on here i appreciate all the information the scientific uh expertise that he brings and it's very very crucial out there people but you have to remember that the scientific evidence out there the research the medical knowledge out there it's not just myths out there you know a lot of people when it comes to relationships and medical health and i've done you know numerous episodes on you know women, menopause, as far as the thinning of the vaginal lining, and it comes with men, right? Why are we so, if you want to say evaluated, right, the size of our penis, how hard it is. Every guy wants to have a hard erection because if it's an ego trip, right? But it also feels good. Let's be honest. It's about talking to your partners about challenges. Don't be embarrassed. And I get that. I say, don't be embarrassed. A lot of times you're going to be, we're going to be, we're a man. So, oh my God, my penis don't work. And I, you know, with countless, countless thousands of couples, literally thousands and thousands of couples over the years. And it comes down to, you know, where one person or the other is, you know, they're belittling. Oh my God, you can't get it. 
erection anymore. You can't get a heart on anymore. What? You're not a man anymore. And it comes from a place of hurt and belittle. Why are you ripping your partner apart when it comes down to that, right? Because you feel like he's not getting hard because you're not making him hard. You're not getting him excited. He's not turned on by you. So what happens? The hurt people hurt people. So you bash, you belittle. I want to get rid of the berating. I want to get rid of the bashing element with relationships big time. What would it take for you to be able to talk about sexual challenges, you know, medical aspect, as far as, you know, female pain aspects, you know, thing of vaginal lining, let's just face it, um, vaginismus, you know, which is the pulsating, um, involuntary pulsating or muscle spasms of the vaginal area. It's very painful, right? And there's a lot of element that it's just supposed to work, right? You're supposed to be, we're human. We're supposed to have sex and enjoy it. For a lot of people, there's a lot of complications out there. And it first needs to start with having an open conversation about what's going on, not only physically, but mentally and how it affects you. This is one thing, and you've heard me say it numerous, numerous times about being able to talk about how you feel, how an event affects each one of you instead of bashing and belittling and Get rid of that, okay? Let's start promoting love. Let's promote health and growth and evolution in a healthy aspect so you come together like this instead of going apart, right? You know what? I want you to be more connected and have the relationship that you crave, okay? I appreciate everybody tuning in, showing up, and check me out. The Art of Relationships.org is my website. And as always, my YouTube channel is The Art of Relationships Show. Facebook is Detroit's Love Guru. You can find me on Instagram, Detroit's Love Guru. Guru. <laughs> there we go. Twitter is Detroit Love Guru without the S because they went, uh, it was too long. So I appreciate from the bottom of my heart all the support I've been getting over the years for The Art of Relationships Show. And as always, you know, my passion is to help people get more connected, feeling more love, more desired, more respected, and more appreciated in your relationship, and also promoting self-love and self-respect within yourself. Peace and love to everybody out there. Have a great night. Take care. Bye-bye.